In June of 2021, Ford took the automotive world by storm by releasing their Ford Maverick, their rendition of a mini truck, just months after Hyundai released their Santa Cruz, which is a unibody compact truck. Upon release, this was an instant hit, selling over 74,000 units in 2022. That is over double the amount of units sold by Hyundai or the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, what made this truck so popular? Was it the sub $20,000 entry price? Was it the short bed? Was it the funky looks? Or was it the hybrid system that gets you over 40 miles per gallon? Well, I think it's a combination of all those things, but unfortunately, as time goes on, that price continues to increase. In 2023 and 2024, you can no longer find these Ford Mavericks under that $20,000 price mark. And that is probably due in part by a couple of things, and one is supply and demand. Ford cannot supply these vehicles for the demand that there is. They are having supply chain issues and having trouble deliver the vehicles to the orders that are in. They are even rolling over 2023 models or 2023 orders into the 2024 model year. So today we're gonna to take a look at this 2023 Ford Maverick Hybrid XLT and see what it has to offer and see why this truck may be so popular. Now this vehicle as equipped is just over $30,000, $30,600 to be exact, and that is for the 23 model year. Now, if you were to equip this truck as it is in the 24 model year, it's gonna be substantially more, almost $4,000 more, with some features that you can no longer get paired together. And that's all gonna be talked about here later in the video, but let's take a look at this vehicle and see what makes this thing such a hit with the people. The front design of the Ford Maverick has not changed much since its release in 2021, but there is something special about this Maverick behind me, and that is that it is equipped with the black appearance package, which is a $1,645 option from the factory, and it changes quite a few things. Starting in the front, we're gonna take a look and see what changes are made. So starting off, we no longer have a blue oval, we have a black appearance badge, which is a blacked out Ford logo, sitting in a gloss black bar that runs headlight to headlight, giving a blacked out look on this front end. Now bringing us over to the headlights, we have painted interiors on these headlights, giving it a smoked look, but keeping a clear lens. Now these are LED headlamps that come standard on all trims, but these do still have an incandescent turn signal bulb. Down below, you can find that we do not have any fog lights. No matter what trim you get, you are not gonna have the option of fog lights from the factory. Now was that Ford saying that you're okay with your standard LED headlights, you do not need fog lights? or was that them cutting costs? Now, if you plan on taking your Ford Maverick off-road, there's some numbers that you wanna know, and that is approach angle and ground clearance. So for approach angle, we're looking at 20.6 degrees of approach angle and a total of 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Carrying on the theme of the black appearance package from the headlights, moving back, you can see we have these gloss black painted mirrors that are part of that package. We also have these 18 inch aluminum black wheels that are part of that black appearance package, but 17 inch aluminum wheels are standard on the XLT trim. Now this XLT badge is also gloss black, which is a nice feature. It makes everything look real blacked out and there is no chrome to be found on this vehicle. Now these are 18 inch wheels and wrapping this wheel is a Michelin Primacy all season tire in a 225-60 R18 size. And if we move inward, we can talk about the suspension. So in the front, we have our basic independent front suspension or a McPherson strut. And then in the rear, we have an independent twist beam suspension with an integrated stabilizer bar. Starting in the bed of the Maverick, this is what sets it apart from the competition and what makes this truck so special. And so this is a four and a half foot bed, so it is a little bit smaller than what you'd find in say a Chevy Colorado, a Ford Ranger, or a Toyota Tacoma. But what's special about this truck is the Ford engineers put a lot of thought into making this truck special and making it functional even though it has a shorter bed. You can lay a two by four or two by six here in this indentation or slide it in right here. What that does is give you some options for organizing your cargo space. The other special thing about this bed is that there is 10 tie downs. So what that means is 10 spots to tie your cargo down. So we have one, two, three, four. We have five, six, seven, eight. And then the last two, I'm gonna jump down here. Hopefully I'm staying in frame. The last two are standard on all Ford Mavericks. There's one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side, and those are tie downs for your 45 degree two level tailgate. And those are standard on all Ford Mavericks. And they also double as bottle openers, obviously not condoning drinking and driving, but if your car is parked and you're not going anywhere, pop a bottle of soda or beer and have a good time. Now touching on the two position tailgate, you can come back here and just on this right here, you can pull this out 
and move this to the upper section. And what that does is bring that tailgate up to a 45 degree angle and that will level perfectly with the wheel well so you can slide in four by eight sheets of plywood, sheet rock, anything of that sort. Any big item that you don't think you'd be able to fit in this bed, they thought about that where you can bring that tailgate up and slide those in with ease. As you can see, this is equipped with Ford Tough Bed Spray and Bed Liner, which is a $495 option from the factory. Moving down to the rear of the cargo box on the driver's side, we have a 400 watt, 110 volt inverter that comes with that XLT luxury package like this truck is equipped with. Behind that is an LED light that lights up your cargo box that you can manually switch on with a button underneath it. And this LED light comes standard on the XLT and the Lariat trims. Last cool feature I'm gonna talk about in the Mavericks bed is that this comes pre-wired with two, one on the passenger side, one on the driver's side, two 12 volt connections with a connector in the glove box when it comes from the factory. And what that does is that you can wire up any 12 volt accessory that you want. You can put in bed lighting, a mini fridge, things of that sort, and it just comes pre-wired. You just have to do a couple of things and you can scan this little QR code that comes on this cubby and it'll show you how to set that up or just YouTube it or Google it and it'll show you how to do that easily. The XLT luxury package does get you a full size spare that is mounted under the bed. It is a steely, but it is still a full size spare. Under the hood, we have a 2.5 liter four cylinder motor paired with that hybrid system that produces 191 combined horsepower and 155 pound feet of torque. Now this is the front wheel drive configuration of the Maverick and in the hybrid system, you can only get front wheel drive. Now in this configuration as set up hybrid system with the front wheel drive, you get 40 miles per gallon combined, which is incredible for it having a truck bed. That's a pretty awesome feature. Now this is front wheel drive only. If you want all wheel drive, you're gonna have to bump up to the optional motor, the two liter EcoBoost engine that produces 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque. Now you can choose from front wheel drive or all wheel drive and you can get up to 30 miles per gallon combined in that setup. In the front seats, you're gonna find plenty of space for us tall guys with 42.8 inches of leg room, which is 1.4 inches more than the Santa Cruz, its competitor in this compact truck segment. Now for headroom, we're looking at 40.3 inches of headroom, and it's gonna be just about two inches less if you get the optional moonroof. The moonroof is a $995 option that you can equip an XLT trim or a Lariat trim when ordering the vehicle. This Maverick is equipped with that XLT luxury package that was $1,730 from the factory and that gets you quite a few things. Starting off with the seats, we have eight-way power adjustable driver seat with lumbar support. We have a six-way manual passenger seat and then we also get this nice vinyl wrapped steering wheel that is heated as well as having heated seats in the front. Now the XLT luxury package gets you some other things outside of the interior, including that 400 watt, 110 volt inverter that you can find in the bed, also in the interior. So two different plugs, as well as the LED box lighting and your hitch receiver and your four pin connector. In the back seats of the Maverick, you're gonna find 35.9 inches of legroom, which is a little bit smaller than the Santa Cruz, which sits at 36.7 inches of legroom. And then for headroom, we're looking at 39.6 inches of headroom. It's a little bit less in the legroom department and a little bit more in the headroom department. Now, overall passenger volume for the vehicle interior is 100.3 cubic feet and the Santa Cruz is at 101.8 cubic feet. So overall, the Santa Cruz is just a little bit bigger in the interior passenger volume. Now, overall seat comfort for someone my size, this front seat is set to where I would be driving. It's actually surprisingly roomy back here for as small as it looks from the outside. Now, that does give a nice indentation in the back of this front driver's seat, so your knees are gonna be nice there, but if you put them out to the side, they are gonna hit the seat back. But when they are in this little indentation, I probably have an inch, maybe an inch and a half of room if I am all the way scooted back to that back seat cushion. For our interior color, we have this black onyx trim that you can only get if you select the XLT luxury package as well as the black appearance package. Otherwise, it's just gonna be a navy interior. Nice kind of two-tone gray design here for the seat centers. And then on the perimeter of the seats, we have this nice dark gray cloth material and then nice bolsters for the back here and nice bolsters for the lower portion of the seat. Your seat belt receptacle comes up nice and high so it's easy to find. And then moving a little bit past that, we have our center console. So we have a nice vinyl wrapped padded center console with a nice stitch going around the perimeter. Pull the latch here and that opens up to a pretty basic center console. So inside it is no lights, no USB chargers and no rubber mat. We have a removable felt liner here that we can pull in and out. And then it is big enough for a hydro flask, but we have to angle it just so, so that can close. 
In front of the center console cubby, we have a nice little storage area here, part of a very nice storage system inside the interior. But right here, I have noticed I have stored mostly my wallet and keys. When driving, I have many sets of keys with all the cars coming in and out of my place. So if I have some in my pockets, I just pull them out and set them right in there. In front of that, we have another little deep cubby that would be nice for some coins, paper clips, uh, maybe some miscellaneous items. In front of that, we have our two cup holders that are connected through the center with some nice spring-loaded holders there so you can fit many different sizes very snugly. To the left, we have our drive select. So we have park, reverse, neutral drive, then in the center, a low button, electronic parking brake, and down below that, we have our drive select or our drive mode select. So we have five different drive modes. We have normal, tow haul, slippery, eco, as well as sport. Our traction control button and our auto hold on and off, as well as a nice credit card slot. Up in front of all that, we have a nice little cubby here. I'm going to light this with my phone because there is no ambient lighting for the interior. So that will get dark and we're not gonna be able to see that. So as you can see, we have a passenger side phone holder with a cutout for your charging port. So you can be charging that and have your phone sitting upright. In front of that, a nice little cubby for some wallet, keys, miscellaneous items with a nice divider, keeping everything stable and in its area. To the left, we have a nice and big wireless charger and that fits a iPhone 13 Pro Max with no problem. So much so that it makes it hard to remove sometimes because it fits so well. Moving up, we have our 12 volt AC right there as well as our USB-A and USB-C. Above that, we have our HVAC controls. So we have physical HVAC controls, your heated mirror here, your defrost, where you want your air going, recirculate AC, physical buttons there. And then down below, we have our heated seats, driver, passenger, and then our heated steering wheel. Uh, speed dial for your fan speed, up and down, and then a temperature dial on the passenger side. And then you press it and that turns the whole HVAC system off. Two vents, one for the driver, one for the passenger, and then up above we have our tuning controls. So our volume, our tune, forward and back on our tracks, mute, and also you can turn the display all the way off. Turning that back on, we have our eight inch display here, or eight inch infotainment system. It does come standard on all trims of the Maverick, although the XL and XLT get a basic infotainment system, the Lariat gets the Sync 3 system. So these are just basic systems. So if we go back here, you can see if we go back to our main menu, we do have a pretty basic menu. So we do not have the advanced voice recognition as well as our active noise canceling. So go back to CarPlay. This is utilized for a CarPlay setting. So you plug your phone in into one of these two ports. It pops up your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. It is not wireless. It has to be wired. Going back to our main menu, we have just a few options, audio, phone, maps, going back to our Apple CarPlay as well as changing some of the settings. So we can tune our sound and this is just a basic stereo system. This is not the Bang & Olufsen sound system. So there's not much to choose from as well in terms of range. Go treble, mid-range bass, and then we go all the way back and we just have some basic settings. This is not the Sync 3 system. This is just a basic infotainment system that Ford puts in the XL and the XLT. If you want the Sync 3 system, bump up to the Lariat and you will get that in your eight inch screen. To the right of the eight inch screen, we have a nice little cubby here with a removable rubber mat, just in case that gets dirty for some reason, remove that and put it back in. Nice deep cubby, just to give you an idea, here is my iPhone. More storage up above that. Moving over to our gauge cluster, we have a pretty basic setup here. So right now we have a 4.5 inch screen with our battery indicator as well as our speedometer on the right. Now what this does is tells us if we're in the recharge state or we're using our power. So it goes anywhere from zero to 100% power as well as some little lights down there and indications of what's going on. Down below the 4.5 inch screen, we have our coolant temperature as well as our fuel gauge. And I've driven about 200 miles and this has barely sipped through any fuel. Now controlling this 4.5 inch screen are these buttons right here on the passenger side or the right side of the steering wheel. So we go ahead and press menu and that will bring us through some of these options as you can see here. Then on the left side of the steering wheel, we have our volume controls, volume mute, up, down, as well as our cruise control settings. So this does have cruise control, but it is not advanced cruise control. So it will not slow down and speed up with the car in front of you. Moving from our eight inch screen here, moving over to our gauge cluster, we have a 4.2 inch screen right in the center of our dash with our battery indicator dials here, as well as our speedometer on the right. Now what this dial over here on the left does is tells us 
if we're in the recharge state or how much power we are using of the battery. Some indicator lights inside that dial, and then over on the right side is our speedometer going from zero to 140 miles per hour. In the middle down below, we have our coolant temperature, our fuel gauge, as you can see, I've only sipped through about a quarter tank after 200 miles of driving. This thing is very fuel efficient and just sips through the gas. Shows us what gear we're in down below. We're right now in park. We could be in reverse, neutral, drive, or low. And then this 4.2 inch screen just displays some basic information, all controlled by the right side of your steering wheel. Right here, you press menu, brings up your menu, and you can go through that and then go through different portions like our driver assist, Apple CarPlay, our phone, our settings, and going back to our trip analytics. Now on the left side of our steering wheel, we have our cruise control settings here. So we press that and it initiates it. We can set it, lower our speed, increase our speed down below. We have our volume down, volume up, as well as our mute button, and then a cancel button for your cruise control. Now this does not have smart cruise control, this is just your basic, so this is going to set your cruise control, but it's not gonna follow the car in front of you or set your follow distance. This does have forward collision assist, so it will warn you if you are going to smash into somebody. Door panels are fairly simple with some nice cubby area here. Nice water bottle attachment that goes all the way back, depending on what you wanna store. Nice tall water bottle, some nice storage down here. Now in the speaker grill, you can see that they still have that logo indentation. If you do, go up to the Larry and get that Bang & Olufsen 8 speaker system. When you think of hybrid, you might be thinking that you're going to be kind of in a non-performance oriented car. Now granted, this isn't a performance oriented car, it's more of a uh, bottom of the barrel, kind of getting you cheap into a truck, but also giving you a good fuel economy. You really aren't sacrificing too much in the performance category. Now, you are going to be getting more performance in that 2 liter turbo EcoBoost, but with this 2.5 liter pair with the hybrid motor, you're still getting a decent bit of power. In zero to 60, I have put this at 7.9 seconds. Now, that isn't the fastest. Obviously, the two liter EcoBoost is gonna be much faster than that, but still 7.9 seconds while getting 40 miles per gallon. And just to give you an idea, and I'll talk about fuel economy here in a little bit, but just to give you an idea, I've been testing this vehicle for the past week. I have 152.6 miles on it. I'm averaging 39.2 miles per gallon. Now, granted, that is not a lot of highway miles. It's a lot of 40, 45 mile an hour back roads like I'm on right now, and that's where this thing shines. So in the city, this is ready for 42 miles per gallon. We're not in the city, but we're kind of right in between highway and city. So with that all being said, this thing still has quite a good performance number for it being an economical miles per gallon monster. So zero to 60, 7.9 seconds is where I rank this at on my little race box, and that's what I averaged. I averaged anywhere from a 7.9 to an 8.1 is where I tested it. Now in terms of braking, I do actually have quite a bit of experience with Mavericks. I, uh, I've driven a two liter EcoBoost Maverick Lariat FX4 off-road package quite a bit a year or two ago when they first came out. And one thing I noticed with the braking on the Maverick, at least with the EcoBoost variant, is that the brakes are very, very grabby. And what I mean by that is when you first initially press the brake pedal, it's super grabby and it just kind of jolts you forward and then you can kind of linear, linearly get into the brake pedal and slow down. What I've noticed with this hybrid is that is not the case. You can gradually slow down. There is no bite right at the beginning of the pedal. Gradually slow down and it is coming to a stop with no problem. Now, when you are slamming on the brakes, I do find this track's very, very straight. There is no kind of wobble like you get sometimes in vehicles with the ABS kicking in and out. It tracks completely straight, feels very confidence inspiring. When you are hard on the brakes, hopefully you'll never have to do that because most times when you're hard on the brakes, that means there is an emergency situation. So let's hope you're not really testing that out. Maybe if you take this to the track like a crazy person, but we'll see. I mean, if you take it to the track, I wanna know how it does. It'd be very interesting. With that being said, this is rated to stop from 60 and 119 feet. I think it's good braking, a lot better than the two liter EcoBoost. There isn't that grabbiness that I felt in that. Now, if there was, I'd probably put this down in the C margin, but since there isn't that grabbiness, that kind of really intense braking right at the first bit of pedal, I'm gonna put this up into the B category. In terms of handling for this truck, it's more sedan-like or more hot hatch-like when you are talking about handling. You have very tight electronic power steering. Um, it is based off of that C2 platform from Ford, which is like the Ford Escape, Ford Bronco, and then also this Ford Maverick, and they all handle relatively similar. Very tight and very car-like. I don't find that it has that sway or that bounce like most trucks do. Since this is a unibody construction, it is gonna be a little bit tighter than a body on frame. With that, I'm gonna rank the handling a B. I do find that it handles very well. 
but that can sacrifice the overall ride quality, which I will touch on here in a second. For overall ride quality, I'm gonna put this at a C plus. Rides a little stiff for my liking. This is a unibody construction, not body on frame like most trucks, so it's gonna ride a little bit different no matter what than like, let's say a Ford Ranger, F-150, things of that sort. So I kind of have to give it some leeway here and there. While the ride is fairly stiff when you're under 60 miles an hour, once you are up to highway speeds, I do find that this ride quality is very confident inspiring. This is a mid 3000 pound truck, so it is not the heaviest truck on the road, but it feels that it is much heavier than what it is. And what I mean by that is it's very composed, very stable. It doesn't feel like you're gonna be persuaded by any cracks or crevices in the road. But if you hit something like a pothole or something like that on a highway, it just kind of absorbs it. It is a little bit stiff, but again, it's not jarring. It's not gonna hurt you. Uh, so ride quality is kind of a tricky one because up at speed, it's real nice on highways where it's nice and smooth. But on back roads, I do find that it is a little bit stiff in my liking. Uh, for what this vehicle is, it's more of a city driver. I wish the suspension was a little bit softer uh, because it can be a little harsh at times, kind of jostling you back and forth when you hit those bumps. When I am cruising at 45 miles an hour on a little back road where the speed limit is 40 to 50 miles an hour, I do find that the road noise is pretty much non-existent. You can hear things here and there, like some road noise if you hit a pothole, you can hear that. But Overall, the cabin noise inside of this Ford Maverick Hybrid is not too bad in my opinion. Now you have been asking for it, so I have a decibel reader here, and this gives you something tangible to hold on to when I am talking about cabin noise. So I cruise at 45 miles an hour on one of my backcountry roads that is near my house, and I averaged a 66.5 decibel reading when cruising at 45 miles per hour. Now over a span of a two minute drive, that is the max decibel reading that I got on my little machine. So 66.5 decibels. And then I wanted to test if you do go full throttle, since this thing is a CVT, it kind of stays up in those RPMs when you are going full throttle and accelerating. So I wanted to rate that and I wanted to measure that with this little decibel reader. And for that, I got 73.9 decibels as the peak or the max decibel rating when accelerating from zero all the way up to say 60 or 70 miles an hour. So that max rating is around 73, 74 decibels. So overall cabin noise inside the Ford Maverick front wheel drive hybrid is really not too bad when you are comparing it to other vehicles in this nature. So Santa Cruz, and if you jump up, you can go Ridgeline, Ford Ranger. From here on out, I will be rating cabin noise with this decibel reader. So you guys have some sort of tangible uh, number to take home. And you can also test it in your own vehicle. You can download a decibel meter on your phones. Now it's probably not gonna be as accurate as my designated decibel reader that I have, but it will do pretty good. I have used those in the past and they are fairly accurate. Again, it might not be as accurate as this, but it's something nice to have. So you can compare your cabin noise versus what we are talking about in these videos. Now let's talk about where this Ford Maverick shines and that is the fuel economy or the miles per gallon uh, category. Now there is only two vehicles in this compact truck segment. It's this Ford Maverick and the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Now, if you wanted to throw the Honda Ridgeline in there, you probably could, but that is technically in the midsize truck segment with the Toyota Tacoma and the Nissan Frontier. But if you wanted to bring that in, this still just dominates the competition uh, with, those, with those three vehicles in this class. This just dominates the competition. So this gets 42 miles per gallon in the city, 33 highway or 37 miles per gallon combined. And for the other two vehicles, they're sitting around the low 20s for max miles per gallon. No matter what way you configure it, if you configure it with front wheel drive and the lowest power options, they are getting nowhere close to where this vehicle is. Now this is a hybrid option and the Santa Cruz and the Ridgeline do not have a hybrid option for either one of them. But in that segment, it's just hard to compare in the miles per gallon because this thing just blows them out of the water. And just to give you an example, so right now I'm sitting at 166 miles that I have driven since getting this car last Tuesday. I still have 361 miles of range or till empty and I am averaging 39.6 miles per gallon over that 166 miles, which is actually crazy to think about because I've actually been testing this pretty hard, zero to 60, going around corners, braking, things of that sort, and it just seems like it just handles everything so well. Now, it's, what's nice is that on your little four inch display in the gauge cluster area, it does give you a trip summary. So like right now, it's all recording my miles per gallon, how far I've driven, how much electric I've used, or how long I've driven on all electric. And when you get done with your drive, you turn the car off, it'll show you a little screen, and you can see what your miles per gallon was for that exact trip, which is a nice little feature because you can just see every time you drive how efficient this vehicle really is. So obviously for fuel economy, I have to rate this an A+. There is nothing better uh, in this truck segment, even in the midsize trucks, there's not much to compare. Uh, so obviously it has to be an A+, for fuel economy. 
So this vehicle is a 2023 model. We are now on to the 2024 models or ordering for the 2024 models. Some people have pre-ordered the 23 and are now being moved to a 24 due to supply chain issues and the lack of production that Ford can keep up with. So people are having to get their 23s turned into a 24 allocation. This started at $24,400 as the base price. This is the XLT trim, which is the middle of the class. There's XL, XLT, and the Lariat for the Ford Maverick. So we're right there in the middle of the lineup. And in 2023, this vehicle started at $24,400 for the hybrid front wheel drive XLT. Now with the options we have added on here, uh, spray and bed liner, luxury package, black appearance package, and a couple of other smaller options, this vehicle did retail or MSRP for uh, mid $30,000, $30,600 with destination. That's where things get tricky because now that people's vehicles are getting rolled into 2024 or their orders are getting rolled into 2024, the price has increased quite a bit. From 2023 to 2024, this vehicle or this trim level's base price, the XLT base price, has increased $3,300 from last year to this year. So you are going to be paying quite a bit more, especially when you start adding options. As a clip, this vehicle is over $4,000 more. Uh, from 2023 to 2024. Now there are some options that you cannot get on the 24, like the black appearance package paired with that spray and bed liner like we have here, which is kind of odd that they would do away with that, or at least it's not available on the website. When you go on there and configure it as we have it here, as soon as you uh, select the spray and bed liner, it asks you to remove the black appearance package. So not quite sure why that is, Maybe it was different from 23 to 24. Maybe it's supply chain issues or just overall manufacturing errors. I don't know, but it is uh, quite a bit more expensive to get the Ford Maverick now than it was a year prior or even a year before that. And that is gonna wrap up my review for the 2023 Ford Maverick Hybrid front wheel drive. Once again, thanks for watching. This video was a lot of fun to film. This truck is a lot of fun to drive. It's great miles per gallon, decent performance, and overall just a amazing truck it's uh obviously not as capable at towing things and putting big things in the bed but for what it is it's almost like a sedan with a truck bed so it's pretty convenient in my opinion and if you're not looking for a massive truck to be towing this is the truck for you as it is one of two in this compact truck segment and obviously the better choice if you are just looking for overall value once again thanks for watching i am nick with alex and autos autos buyer guide and until my next review i will see you guys then